Good day, Solid Edge users. This is Mike Ritzer, Application Engineer for Acuity Solutions. And I'm pleased to bring you this edition of the Acuity Solutions Lunch and Learn. Today's topic will be new enhancements in ST6 for Solid Edge with respect to the assembly and draft environments. To start this off, Solid Edge has added some enhancements to the Pathfinder, uh, mostly in visual and selection type things. When you're selecting things, it, things become a little more visual. For example, when I come over and I highlight a part, you can see in the lower part of my Pathfinder, there is a kind of a gold highlight around that assembly. Now that's indicating that that part is down inside of that assembly. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we have a scroll two, right? And you've probably played with that in the past, where you can do a scroll two, and this opens up the pathfinder and scrolls down into the. Uh, basically, it breaks open the subassemblies and breaks down into, drills down into those uh, parts. So you can see now that if I put my cursor just over the top of it. The part itself, which is about halfway down in the Pathfinder, is a deeper gold color. And then its assembly that it's associated with is a lighter gold, and the one above that is a lighter gold. So it's kind of giving you an idea visually of where the part resides uh, within the assembly structure. Now the only thing that will not highlight is the top level, and I'm not really sure why they did that, but it's, it's just the way it was written that the top level, it assumes that you're at the top level once you hit. Uh, this level right here. So just by putting your cursor over things you will get that gold uh, hue, that gold color. But if you select the part then you get a deep blue color here and then a lighter blue color on the subsequent assembly and sub-assemblies. So a very nice way to represent how the Pathfinder is looking at things and, and once again if you, you know if you are close down you're only going to see the lighter blue color shading in that subassembly and again you can right click you can go to scroll to and it will open up the pathfinder and show you where that is now there is a button and this is nothing new to ST6 this has been around for a while if you go to your helpers and your solid edge options um, I believe you can tell it to scroll open uh, when you select the part and um, this may not be where it is, but there's a there's a location in, in here where you can turn on a checkbox, and it will automatically uh, open up the or scroll open the parts. And it may be in the assembly uh, auto scroll assembly pathfinder. So what that means, and I'm sorry, that was not in the helpers. That was in the assembly. So what that means is if I've got my pathfinder all closed down that when I select a component, left click, it automatically opens up my Pathfinder and basically does an automatic scroll to that part. So that's a, but out of the box that is not set. So once again, you go to Solid Edge Options, you go to Assembly, and then you turn on that button right there. So the next option that they've provided for us is an improvement, finally, to the create and place function and hopefully all of you have had some experience with create and place it's a very very powerful tool uh, once you figured out how to get the thing set up it was uh, it was a very very powerful tool and probably the setup was the hardest part of using create and place and for years we've been uh, you know saying hey you know what you guys can improve this a little bit and and uh, it just did, I think it just took a back burner because it worked fine you just had to figure out how to make it go and, uh, and now they have improved it significantly. It's very much, um, uh, very much improved and it's much easier to get your parts located into the assembly uh, so that you can go ahead and modify the, or create them within the context of that assembly. So what I've done here is I've turned on a display configuration for just the wheel on the, um, sh the Schmidt uh, snow thrower. And we're going to just add just a fictitious part off, uh, let's say, off the end of this guy right here. And um, so once again, you know, you can get the create in place up here, or you can use it off your uh, toolbar here where you can open this up. And uh, 
what ends up happening here now is instead of it just giving us a bunch of prompts, and I, I, I used to uh, have a uh, document that was the five steps in create in place, and I, I no longer have to give that out to customers now because this is also nice. But this this used to come up mixed in with uh, the template selection and the file name selection and the location and all this stuff used to come up in one dialog box and now what they've done is they pulled out the things that you normally would do uh, every time you want to use create in place and they put them in in options and you can save those options you can tell it to remember your selection and don't show me this dialog again so if you always use graphic input which I always do um, you can set the radio button and you can tell it to to use the uh, location where the active assembly is for your new com um, new part path, and and then I also always went into uh, edit in place after I uh, selected where I wanted the part to go. So these things can all be remembered now and saved. So if I check this off, then it won't come up and ask me for these anymore. You can also get back to those options by selecting this options box right here. So if you want to go back and reset something, you can. So I'm going to go ahead and tell it out. That's okay. And now what's on my cursor, and it may be a little difficult to see. There it is. It's a, a triad that's following my, my cursor. And if you recall, in the past, we've had to like select the part we want to build it to. We want to select the plane we want to build it on. We want to select the X, Y um, base of the plane and the, the center of the plane. There's a bunch of selections that you had to do. And those have all been replaced by this triad. Now, before we get started with the triad, I'd like to mention that your um, templates are right here. You can pull these down right here, and these are your base templates um, that you normally would see when you do a new document. And then also, you can select uh, the place where you want to browse for other templates if you don't see what you're like there. And another big addition here is that they've added the material table. So now we can tell it what material we want it to be before we ever create the part file. So very nice um, additions and enhancements here to the create in place. This button here, we can tell it that we want to ground it or just leave it as a floating part out in space. And then here we've got the origin. How do we want the origin? And these, this was a, the radio button uh, within the options, but you can reset that at any time while you're doing your uh, gr uh, inputs for this create in place. Here's your um, uh, points that you want to pick up. I just leave it at uh, center and all endpoints. And then this little guy is telling it that I want to edit it in place. So basically all the things that you saw in the options are still definable out here with uh, button buttons on the Smart Step ribbon bar. It's not the only thing left to do is to tell it where I want to locate this thing. And um, I can come down here and I can try to pick it up on this one, but as we know that uh, if you can't select things, it's probably not an active part. So I'm going to come up and say, I want to activate that wheel. I right mouse click, and now I can pick up parts on that wheel. And you can see that it's allowing me to position this anywhere I want to in this, uh, on this plane. You can see it's snapping the triad to the plane. And what's nice about this is if I put it on that um, center point right there, and, and you can see down at the prompt bar, you can press the N key, the B key, the F key. This will flip. It will go back. It will uh, flip the triad around. And in my case, I don't know what's my keyboard won't um, respond to all the, the keys. But if I do an F, you can see it's flipping back and forth. And what I want is I want to look straight down on top of that uh, part when, with the new part. So right down on top of that face. So my X and Y is in the correct position. And then all I got to do is click to select that location, and it will it will it will glue that triad down onto that part. But we're not done yet, and, and it allows us to go back now and change any of these things. If you go, oh, wait a minute, I don't want to create a part, I want to create a sheet metal part, you can go back and change that at any time, and um, uh, you know, you're not stuck. You know, when you, once, you, once you click that last point in the old create in place, you were stuck with whatever your set setups were, and now you're not. You can go back and reset any of these things that you want to. But if you got it the way you want, you can either green check it or you can right mouse click. And what comes up is the dialog box for the part name, which is very cool. So I'm going to, um, and what's nice about this too is if I hit save, it tells me that there's another file that already exists. And create in place would have just failed and said, oh, I've already got a part like that and you got to go back through the whole thing again. So 
Once I commit that, and right now I have my um, background turned off, I'm in create in place. I'm in the part modeling mode right now, and I'm ready to start creating my new part within Solid Edge. So what I want to do is I just, and again, this is a fictitious part. I'm not building anything um, all that crazy, but uh, I'm going to use my project to sketch, and I'm in synchronous mode right now. And I'm going to go ahead and project onto the XY plane. So I'm going to hit F3 to lock onto that plane. And then I'm going to, I want to pick this whole face right here with the hole in it. So I'm going to change this to um, uh, tangent face chain, I think is what, no, that's not what I want. Uh, yes, that was what I wanted. Tangent face chain, and that allows me to pick up all that information and get that all at once. So um, one new thing in modeling, this is kind of, I know this is only supposed to be an assembly and um, draft topics, but there is some a cool thing that got added in modeling. If you're, if you're going to do an extrude, you can tell Solid Edge now that you want to include internal loops, exclude internal loops, or use only internal loops. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Let's go with inter, uh, include internal loops for, right for now. And we'll, let's see what happens here. When I click on this and I click right click to commit it, I'm pulling out the whole thing and you can see that it's leaving the hole inside because I told it to uh, include the internal links or the internal loops. If I say exclude, then I'm only getting just the outside block. And if I say use only the internal loops, then I'm getting just the pin that goes in the inside of it. So this is kind of a nice thing that they've added in here, include internal loops, or which is which I think was the default in ST5, but now you've got the option to uh, make it whatever you want it to be. Another enhancement, when you're modeling your parts within the context of the assembly, and you're in synchronous mode, this will not work in ordered mode, but if you're in synchronous mode, uh, you can use surfaces of the parts in the assembly as sketch planes. This is brand new again for ST6, and the way this works is obviously you have to have your parts activated, and I went and activated the parts that I'm going to be showing you now. But typically, you know, when you go to do a line command or you do a circle or whatever, you know, you can only pick up on components within the part unless you include a surface off from one of the parts and go through that um, effort. But now with ST6, what you can do is you can hold the shift key down, and if you look at the prompt bar, it tells you right there, uh, hold the shift key down to locate assembly planes. And so now if I hold the shift key down and I go down to one of the planes on one of these parts, you can see that it's snapping to that plane. So now I am drawing right on that plane. So you can see that now I've created a uh, shape that is on the same plane as that, uh, that surface on that sheet metal part. So you, know, you no longer have to try to figure out where the planes are or put, put surfaces on and try to build to those surfaces. You can just pick them right up off from the parts. Once again, I'll do another one. Perhaps I want to do maybe a rectangular um, thing on this. And I hold down the shift key and I put it over the top of that angled, uh, uh, angled um, face there. And now I've got the uh, sketch that I need to create a block that's sitting right on that face. So a real nice tool, I think, that uh, it's going to make it much easier to do create in place um, and create within the context of the assembly there. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, do another rectangle here, and we're going to do a shift, and then we're going to select. Oh, no, see, I can't select that. Why? Well, because I didn't activate that part. So I'm going to go ahead and activate that on the fly, hold my shift key down. I'm going to draw on this surface right here, and we'll go about that big. Now the reason I was careful about how big I was going to make that was because for the next thing I wanted to show you, come on, follow me boys. Well, maybe I didn't grab it. I didn't, I didn't grab the thing. Alright, so now I've got the block going through the, the wheel. And in Solid Edge ST6 now, you can go right straight to subtract and you can say I want to I want to I want to take that body and I want to subtract this wheel from it. So you can see 
that now it's removed, it's done the Boolean shape and taken that out without having to do an in, insert part copy or, or any of those tools that we used to have to do. Now it's not an associative um, Boolean operation, but it did Boolean that out and now we can uh, move forward with that. So real nice tool. It's uh, all part of uh, the release of ST6 and should make your life much easier when you're in the midst of trying to uh, create parts in solid edge create in place. Once again I just go underneath the subtract I want to take that body and I want to subtract well now see I don't have that activated so I gotta activate that guy and I want to subtract that guy and once again I'll hide the previous level and you can see that it's cut that through there so some real nice tools I think it's gonna make your life much easier. Okay so what I've done here now folks is I've returned back to the assembly and you can see the part that I created in the uh, new assembly here. And then what I want to do is I want to show you that this subtraction function that I did in part modeling can also be done at the, at the assembly level. And so to, to demonstrate that, what I did was, I'm going to do a show only on this so you can see that I, I backed out that Boolean operation that I did uh, with that wheel on this portion of this block. The other one I, I left in there, but uh, I did turn that off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the wheel uh, display configuration back on and turn on my part that I created. So at this level, at the assembly level, there is a new tool in features, and this is an assembly feature called subtract. And in here it does a Boolean subtraction of parts um, with from other parts. And you can create uh, synchronous sub, uh, subtraction if possible and you can also tell it you want to maintain a link for an ordered operation so you can tell it to maintain these links um, and it will automatically put them down into your part files which is very nice if you ever wanted to do that in the past you had to go into the part and do an include um, part insert part copy I think it was and there was a lot of mucking around you had to do so it's all done for you here in the assembly so I'm just going to click OK it's asking me for the target body, which is going to be that. It could be multiple parts if I wanted it to be. Right click, and I'm going to tell it what part I want to subtract out. Right click, and right click again. So that's as easy as it is. I just took this wheel and I subtracted it out of this block. And to demonstrate that and show you the effects, I will hide or do a show only on this part. And you can see that even at the assembly level, um, I was able to remove that material. I don't think that this adds, uh, it does not add a feature in the feature um, list like it normally would if you were doing a, perhaps a cut or a hole or anything like that. It actually pushes that down into the part file itself. So again, another nice tool that should enhance your experience when you're creating parts within the context another of the assembly. Another assembly enhancement in ST6 is the ability to drive a PMI dimension down into the individual components. So for example, I've got two different types of parts here. I've got an ordered part here and I've got a synchronous part here. So let's uh, look at the ordered parts first. So if I want to, I can go to the PMI tab in assembly and I can create a smart dimension. Now if I do a smart dimension here, it's going to remain at the assembly level and this is a way to annotate your drawings for management or for a customer presentation or perhaps for a supplier and it's an ability to put three-dimensional PM what we call PMI dimensions product manufacturing information onto the assembly so that you can take a pretty picture and send it to somebody but we also know that in synchronous PMI dimensions mean that they'll change the actual body of the of the part so uh, in order, a PMI dimension, all it is is just an annotation, but in synchronous it actually drives the part. So that's why I'm picking two different ways to do this. One is with the order part and one is with the synchronous. And what they've added in the PMI smart dimension, or I, I think it's in the di distance between as well, but you've got the ability to create the PMI down in the model. So for example, if I clicked on this guy here and made that a PMI dimension, when I get done, it disappears from the assembly. However, if I go down into the part itself, it actually added the PMI dimension down at the part level. Now once again, this is an ordered part, so this isn't going to make any difference whether I change this. Um, in fact, I don't even know if it'll let me change it. Yes, it will. 
it'll put a line underneath saying it's not to scale. So it's strictly just a visual only thing. It's just for annotating uh, in a three-dimensional arena uh, what, the, what the part sizes are and things like that. So it cannot drive the model. So that's in the ordered mode. Now, if it's a synchronous part, it takes on a whole different level. If I go to Smart Dimension now and I tell it to create it in the model, I can place like from here to here, and now I'm not getting the dimension that I want. There's the dimension that I want, but I want it to come off in the other direction. I guess I can use it in this direction. It doesn't matter. And so now that becomes a driving dimension for the part. Now I do happen to know that the back or the right side of this part is lying on the base reference plane so I can't push anything or pull anything from the right side of the part. So I'm going to go ahead and change the arrow so that it's pointing the other direction and I can set this to 315. And You'll see that it, it kicked the model out and it actually changed the part right within the constructs of the assembly but the PMI dimension itself was loaded down into the part itself. So you can add PMI dimensions without having to in place activate the parts and go down in. Now again, only the synchronous bodies are going to be able to be manipulated by these PMI dimensions. The ordered parts will not. But if you're modeling in synchronous, which we'd like you to get more comfortable doing in, you know, in the future here, um, this is a nice way to add and add the uh, information, the design information, right at the assembly level. So very, very powerful tool. Very, very excited about it. Now, the one thing about um, this is, is, is right now I'm in part select mode in uh, the assembly here. And what that means is if I click on a part, it selects the whole part. As opposed to if I was in face priority and I select the part, I can I can pick the part right here, or I can pick the face right here and change things about it. For instance, that dimension that I just uh, created, 325 maybe. Push that out, and we're going to go ahead and commit that. So face priority and part priority, just remember if it's a synchronous part and you're trying to change it within the context of the assembly, you want to uh, make sure that, um, that you're in face priority. So another very nice tool that they've added to us. Um, the other thing I'll make mention of is they have enhanced the simplify assembly uh, function. It's a, it's a big function. Uh, it doesn't lend itself well to do any kind of demonstration in this short amount of time. But if you're interested in it, go to the help and look at uh, what's new in Solid Edge ST6. And you can uh, uh, trace through how to use the simplify assembly. It's it's all been completely revamped in um, Solid Edge Assembly. The last topic we're going to talk about in Assembly, as far as the enhancements in ST6, is the ability to do dynamic edits on ordered parts while you're in the, the Assembly. So no longer do you have to in place activate to make changes to features in your part, in your ordered parts. So that seems a little bit crazy. Now, how can you do that? Well, in ST6, again, we have part priority and we have face priority. And once again, part priority simply selects the whole part and lets you do things to it within the assembly. If you have face priority turned on and you select, let's see, do I have face priority? Yeah, face priority turned on and you select an ordered part, you get this three buttons that you would normally get when you're down in uh, modeling the part. You get the um, edit definition, you get the edit profile, and you get the dynamic edit. And if you select dynamic edit, you'll get the profile for that feature. So this is the original profile for that feature. So I can left click and I can drag this in, in size, size wise and I can modify that ordered part within the context of this assembly without ever having to go back into uh, solid edge uh, ordered part. So once again, if I click this guy, do a uh, dynamic edit, I can grab this and slide it over until I get to a point where, well, it looks like it's moving all over the place. Oh, it's because I'm changing the size. <laughs> but yeah, so you get the idea. You can, you can change the actual size of the ordered part without ha actually having to go into it, which is really nice. If I pick the holes and do a dynamic edit, 
I can go ahead and change anything about this guy, like its position of the holes, right from within the assembly. So I think this is a really powerful tool. And allows you to make sort of or pseudo synchronous changes to your ordered parts right from within the assembly. So very, very powerful tool. Very excited about the stuff that they put into Solid Edge Assembly for ST6. They're doing a great job and they're providing us with some great enhancements to make our design time, uh, reduce our design times and make it a little more ple pleasant to use Solid Edge. Okay, we're going to move on to the drafting environment. These are ST6 enhancements within the drafting environment. Some really, really nice things to show you today that are going to enhance your experience with solid edge drafting. To start off, I've put placed a view of our um, snow thrower onto the drawing here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a bill of materials for this. So I go to the parts list tool. I'm going to turn on auto ballooning. I'm going to go ahead and select this. I'm going to turn on the auto balloon as soon as it gets done thinking. And I'm going to turn on the automatic parts list. And then we're going to go in and make sure that we've got a top level um, expanded components so that we don't get a big, huge list here and a big bunch of balloons. So one of the issues that folks have had in the past is when Solid Edge ballooned things, it, it kind of threw them out there. And it did a relatively good job. But when you wanted to move things around and you wanted to gather your balloons and move them together, it quite often became very time consuming and very hard to do. So what they've done in ST6, and I'm going to go ahead and place this view so you can see what happens. Notice that this dashed line appears around the outside of the view. And all of my balloons now are locked onto that dashed line. And this is called an alignment shape. And you can see that all of the balloons follow this alignment shape. And there's a spacing that you set up. I think it's in the um, setup for the bill of materials and the ballooning and it maintains that space. So what does this give us? Well, it, it gives us the ability to left click and hold on the balloon and drag the balloon and it will follow whatever this shape is. So notice if I grab this balloon and I start moving it towards uh, balloon number 22 and it starts impeding on balloon number 22's uh, space, it moves it that distance. It, it, it knows it's smart enough to, to say, oh, this person wants to maintain this distance between these two balloons and moves them together. Likewise, if I grab this guy and move him, then they're all, move, they're all moving together. Notice that they don't come back because I'm not pushing any of them. If I push this guy, then it will push them back together to the distance that I've specified between balloons. So that's a real nice enhancement, but it gets better. I can select the alignment shape itself and you notice the handles. Now the handles allow me to grab control points on this, on this curve and change the shape and the size of the curve. Now I just changed this, the size of the curve but I can also change its shape by grabbing one of these control points. So now if I grab this balloon and drag it it's going to follow the shape as I move my cursor. Now again, this is kind of a crazy way to do it here, but um, you get the idea that it's a very nice tool. There's been customers that have asked us to write customized apps to do this in Visual Basic, and uh, it's, it, they, they put it all in here, and it's, it works really, really nice. So the other thing that I'm going to mention about the... Um, alignment shapes is that you can build your own and that button is up here in the annotation grouping under the home tab and it's called annotation alignment shape and it allows me to create my own shape so let's say that I want to create a shape like that now what do I do with it well I want these three balloons to be on this alignment shape so the way you make that happen is you hold down the alt key left click the balloon and hold and drag it up onto your new shape. Left click, hold, drag to the new shape. Left click, hold, and drag to the new shape. So now I'm able to create my own alignment shapes and group balloons together the way I want them to show up um, in the assembly drawing. So 
just a, I think it's just a great tool. It's it's uh, not only very useful, but it's kind of fun to play with, and um, it's you know it's going to I think significantly enhance your. Uh, looks like a, when you're on a bend like that, you don't get your um, spacing, but it's going to should significantly enhance your experience. You know that alignment shape uh, may have been right. The the spacing is right in here. Yeah, here's your minimum spacing. It's in the shape itself. Uh, not in the bill of materials, as I mentioned previously. It's in the shape itself. So, um, again, very nice tool for making your uh, drawings look look much better. Another enhancement at the bill of material level of drafting is the ability to modify a bill of materials table without actually going in and changing the part files. Now that sounds dangerous, but um, and you know I probably wouldn't do this to the uh, the file names with the extensions but this is this is the information that I have right now in this bill of materials and I just want to show you that you can change things about the bill of materials and um, it, it makes it look like the bill of materials you know wasn't really modified so it's really really nice tool to make quick changes to your bill of materials um, make annotation changes and just some quick uh, textual changes on the fly so the way you do this the way this works is you put your cursor over the bill of materials and you double click on it and that in place activates the bill of materials and gives us uh, gives us a view of the bill of materials and all of its components and then what you can do is let's say I want to change the author to um, to, to, to S. Jones uh, so what what I do is I click in this box it's giving me the font type and bold and all that and I can right click on it and say allow cell override and so now I can say S. Jones is the uh, person that should be in that um, field. And you can see that it's made it a different color now. It's made it a white color. And let's say that for whatever reason this guy needs to be 5 instead of 1. So I can put a 5 in there and it overrides that quantity. So watch what happens when I close out of this. It all looks back to the same. There's no color differences or anything like that. And the way you can tell that it's different is you just double click on it and you can see that these are changed fields. So um, the nice thing about it is when you print it, you don't see those changes, you don't see the color differences, and you get a bill of materials that's more accurate or more up to date with what you're trying to convey in that bill of materials. So another great enhancement to the solid edge draft environment. So going a little further, again a lot of these enhancements in drafting for ST6 are annotation type enhancements and um, um, I just wanted to show you one other tool here um, I'm going to go ahead and create a view of a part here and you know I can't remember whether this was an ST5 thing I think it was an ST5 thing where they changed the the way the views were placed but um, now just so you get an idea of what's going on here this is automatically going down now the, the view wizard used to bring you up the little box and you could tell it what um, customization you wanted to do on it and so on and so forth and now it just places a view here and when you place it it's going to expect you to put the left hand view or the right hand view and the top view after the placement of this guy but you can also go back and do it the old fashioned way by clicking the drawing view layout and then there is where you're going to find your custom uh, views and so I, I like to use this tool here the common views tool to get the thing in the orientation that I want it in I go ahead and close and you'll notice if I click um, OK and I place this view let me go down to a uh, one-to-one -one scale then what it wants to do is it wants me to uh, it actually puts me into principal view mode automatically so I can place my top view and my right side view and my ISO view just like I, I normally would have with the, with the boxes. I think that was an ST5 thing but I, I'm not sure. Um, so now that I've got my views placed I'm going to go ahead and put some dimensions on this thing. So bear with me a moment while I drop a few dimensions on this. Let's go to the center of this guy. And note that I'm not making any effort to you know put these in any kind of alignment obviously if I would have um, did them all at once I could have gotten some alignment in them but th what the what we're um, simulating here is 
you've done a bunch of detailing on this this drawing and you got dimensions that are all kind of higgly piggly as far as alignment goes now in ST5 they gave us this new tool that's called maintain alignment set so if I was to grab this dimension and start moving it up and down and then put it over the top of this guy, it automatically put those two together and allowed them to stay together. Um, so that's a nice tool. But that was kind of a pain because you had to do it for each one. Well, now they got this cool tool called Arrange Dimensions. And so what Arrange Dimensions does is, I think it's the first one you pick. I'm not sure, but you, you pick the dimensions that you want to arrange right click and it yeah and, and it drops it drops them down so that they're all in alignment now together so that's a real nice tool to very quickly get everything in alignment and get it all lined up um, easily and fast now if you want to break one of these guys out let's say that I don't want maybe this guy to be in the same line as the rest of these but if I grab this and move it you can see that it keeps moving up and down so you've got this tool here above it to remove the alignment set and if I just click that one item and right click now I can move that by itself and again I could reattach it just by going like that to reattach that there but you can you've got a lot of control over how you want your dimensions to be aligned and then you can break those loose later on and um, have them be stand by themselves like we normally used to do um, this guy here also if you turn this off so let me go back and break the, the alignment on these you'll notice now that even if I do grab this the other four still move and the reason is because I've got maintain alignment set turn on, turned on once I turn that off they're, st they're still moving but if I hold down my I think it's my alt key then I can break the alignment between those so the, the, the idea here is that, oh, those are still moving, aren't they? I'm not sure why. Maybe they're still attached because of this guy. But let's break those up. There we go. Now they're not moving. So now if, if this is turned off, I don't think you're going to be able to reattach these together. I don't think they stay together. You see that? That button is on all the time. But if you don't want those to attach like that, you can turn that off. If I turn it back on now, if I go like that, now they're going to move together. So, so another tool to make your life easier when using Solid Edge drafting. Solid Edge ST6 has enhanced drafting by adding some better tools for doing uh, inserts. Um, and by that I mean um, when you want to, like, let's say you want to do an insert object of a Word document. So you can go in here and you can specify that you want to create a new Word document. And when you do that, you go, you go into Word, obviously. And when you close out, it allows you to place that document. And, and you can put a border around it or not put a border around it. But this has typically in the past, it hasn't worked real well in updating the, the, the documents and they're getting this to the point now where this thing is working nicely you can scale it you can um, you know tell it you want to make it bigger or smaller and um, so it, the embedding uh, OLE objects onto your drawing is getting much better if I double click on that I can place activate into um, you know the word document and I'm going to right click and it's, it's automatically updating everything for me. Now the one thing you want to be aware of, um, I'm not sure where I have a document that I can insert in here. If you create it from the file, the one thing you want to be conscious of is that the link is automatically set. And that's fine. And what it's going to do is it's going to embed the document, it's going to link it back to the original document, and you one would think that when you make changes like from within Word, you're outside of Solid Edge and you make a change to a Word document, that when you come back into the Solid Edge document that it would update. And that doesn't seem to work quite yet. Um, you you uh, basically, once you insert the, the document with a link, 
if you want it to update, you got to double click on it to open up the document and then Solid Edge will acknowledge the changes to that uh, document and then you can close it and it will update on, on your drawing. So I'm going to try to simulate what I'm talking about here. I've got the link turned on. Now with the link off it doesn't matter because it, it brings it in as its own copy which is kind of nice. Um, but um, here I've got the script for this um, uh, for this um, lunch and learn so I'll stick that in here. So here it's allowing me to place the um, the document in here and I'll just slide it in here. So here's the script for my lunch and learn. Now remember I had the link turned on. So if I double click on it and I go in to the Word document and I add some text and then I close out of it, save it, it will update. No problem. However, if I go into Word by itself, and I, I'm not in Solid Edge now, I'm in, I'm in Word, you can see there's the change that I made. I'm going to make a change and put in this from Word. Now, I'm not, I'm not telling you this to make you think that Siemens doesn't have all their poop in a group. It, they do, but you just got to know what's going on. And I, I would imagine in a later version that this is not going to be an issue, but you just need to know that it is an issue here and if you link to a document then you've got a uh, you've got to double click on the document in place activate it within solid edge and then um, um, it, it will update now you can see that it, that change didn't appear here and even if I do like an update views it doesn't doesn't seem to want to do it but if I double click on that and go on an in place activate it there's my change that I just put in close it back down I don't know see uh, you know what I think you have to make the change from within Solid Edge for it to actually show up. Yeah, so I'm not sure if you want to use the link. Um, it, it works great if you're embedding the document directly into the, the DFT file. It works great and it's an object and it, the, the uh, spreadsheets work much better and the, the PowerPoints and any graphics that you put in and Word documents, they, they all update really nicely if they're embedded inside of the, uh, the document. But if you link it you may or may not get uh, what you're looking for. And I, this may even be something that if, if I open it. Um, let me try that. Let me just save this off. And uh, then we'll open it back up and see if that, that change exists once we open it. Because it may just be... Yeah, and I, I don't know why it's not updating. Because it's obviously there. If I put some more text in here and close it, now I'll get the updated... Uh, version of it so you can see that the change has to be made in inside of Solid Edge uh, for it to work but what you can take away from this is I, I know I spent a lot of time talking about the negatives of this but what you can take away from this is that the in-place activation works significantly better now in ST6 than it did prior versions and um, that in itself is a major improvement and um, this is this is going to be nice and I'm, I know they're going to fix this link thing it's just a matter of time. So another enhancement to Solid Edge ST6 in the, with respect to draft is the selection uh, direction has been added. Now what I just did was I just opened up a DXF file which has got a whole bunch of geometry in it and um, just so that I could have a bunch of stuff to select from within draft and if you've used other CAD systems in the past it depended on which direction you fenced as to what you were going to get. So in this particular case, if I go upper left to lower right, I would get what was completely inclusive within the box that I was putting, or the fence that I was putting on the, the drawing. And other CAD systems, if you went from upper left to lower right, you would get what's included. If you went from lower right to upper left, then you got anything that intersected. And Solid Edge has added that into its selection set ability, is the ability to uh, use a directional fence. And um, again, we've got all the other inside, outside, overlapping, and so on. But the directional fence, again, if I go upper left to lower right, it's only what's inside. If I go lower, lower right to upper left, I get anything that intersects. So um, it's a tool that's available in other CAD systems, and they've um, they've have put it into solid edge which is very nice so um, one other thing I'll mention and I just take it I usually like to take an opportunity to try to um, um, you know g 
give you some takeaways on a lot of this stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and set this uh, this geometry here to a different color because the geometry or the color that it was was the select color. But uh, so you can see there's a bunch of um, arcs in here. It looks like there's some splines and things like that in this in the realms of this thing. And these are all grouped together, so I could just select them like that. But um, you know the smart select again. I'll just revisit that real quickly because I used this before when I selected by item type and I got all those balloons but it also works with geometry so if I happen to uh, have the same color geometry somewhere else and I click OK it'll select all the all the geometry that has that color so I'll demonstrate that again by selecting this piece of geometry making it that same color and so that when I select this uh, sorry you gotta turn on the smart select first I select it by color and I say OK, then I get all of this stuff as well because they're, they match the same color. So, you know, try to remember to use that Smart Select because it will make your life much easier, especially if you're doing a lot of uh, 2D geometry within the constructs of your draft document. So to close out this Lunch and Learn, I'll just show you one more quick tool that they've added. It's a nice tool. Before in the past, if you were on a sheet and you wanted to add a sheet, you right-clicked and you said uh, insert new sheet or something like that I guess insert inserts a new sheet and now they've added this little tool right here where if you, if you left click on it it just does an insert sheet so another nice little tool just to make your life a little bit easier and and uh, get you to be clicking just a little bit less while you're doing your job so thank you for attending on behalf of uh, Acuity Solutions this is Mike Ritzer signing off on another version another edition of Solid Edge Lunch and Learn from Acuity Solutions. We'll see you again next time.